Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions, your premier platform for real-time global insights. Well, one thing I want to tell you is that October has been a particularly challenging month for me to do weather forecasting. There have been a lot of moving pieces in these transition seasons. I, I just want to let you know I have really felt behind the eight ball a lot with my forecasting. One of the best examples of this I can show you was midweek last week, an event that was moving through parts of the Dakotas. I anticipated a lot of light rain, temperatures plumbing though and we got some snow in this area so this is just a snow map showing 24-hour accumulation back on the third and the uh, reason why I'm bringing this up is because this is an area that in this video we'll be discussing uh, that uh, has the potential for picking up quite a bit more snowfall and uh, the pattern has been so complicated and difficult for me to forecast just because um, some of the global teleconnections specifically this Indian Ocean feature has really perturbed the flow of the jet stream and the most recent perturbations the most recent changes have been these we had a pretty a decent low pressure system that spun up here in the midsection of the United States over the weekend, bringing rainfall from parts of Kansas through Iowa back up into the Great Lakes states and into the north central plains. And as that system has moved through on Sunday, the frontal boundary has stalled right in through here. Now, as it went through this transition, we saw some incredibly heavy rain in parts of Missouri, Arkansas, and Oklahoma, some locations in here picking up 6 to 10 inches of rainfall. Same thing here in parts uh, of the Mid-South, specifically in, in Tennessee. And this has been, for some folks, the first meaningful rainfall in as much as 45 days. Some folks even going back to June before they've seen rainfall quite like this. And this boundary, well, throughout the rest of the day today, is slowly going to propagate here toward the south and east. And you can see that stretching from Maine all the way back to Mississippi and Louisiana, that is the boundary on which we're expecting to see more rainfall today. Severe weather threat is relatively at a minimum, but still some heavier rainfall. With higher atmospheric pressure in control behind Behind this, our attention is going to turn way off the page, way up here into the Gulf of Alaska and over Alaska as the next event takes shape, which could really cause some problems later on this week. So as I often say, expect this map, our all-hazards weather map, to continue to get quite a bit more colorful over the coming days. We can see that a lot of our major rivers here in the tributaries that feed into the Mississippi still having major flood problems around that frost advisories. But right up in through here, this is where the story begins. This is where we've got our winter storm uh, watches and winter storm warnings already out for this next system that will be digging into the United States and pushing south and east before lifting north and west. Before I get into it, though, I would at least like to show you something that the West Coast needs to be watching this week. As this system plummets through the United States and builds in behind it higher atmospheric pressure by middle and end of this week, we will be seeing moving across the Central Valley of California and the desert southwest some strong winds out of the north and east. These are our Santa Ana winds. And these winds, as they go over the mountains and descend into the valleys, dry out substantially, certainly bringing in some warmer temperatures, but the risk for fire most certainly increases with these winds. Now, we've had a relatively benign fire season across the western United States, and I am extremely thankful for that. But the Santa Ana winds appear to be going here all along the Central Valley of California, so something I want you to be watching out later on this week. But the main show throughout, throughout this week is told right here in the flow of the jet stream. And the trough we all need to be paying close attention to is the one that is right here. Because as this trough sweeps through, it will dig before lifting back over the Great Lakes and potentially stalling out there for a few days at the end of this week. And that is a substantial change of what we've seen. Because if you've been watching my videos, a lot of our systems have been coming through the northern Rockies and then lifting quickly here. And that has prevented some seriously cold air from getting into the United States. But the tilt on this trough is significant and that it is positioned right here, right now, and which means it will move south before turning back to the north. So we need to figure out what this means and why it is so important. I'm going to turn my attention to the European model to help explain this. So the trough we're watching by this evening is sitting right here in parts of you know Alberta getting over to British Columbia. And the tilt of the trough is like this, which means it will swing south before pulling back to the north and east. So by uh, Tuesday evening, and Wednesday evening, our trough digs here into Alberta, excuse me, out of Alberta, I should say, into parts of Montana and Idaho. And as it does so, right about here, it reaches kind of its neutral inflection point before it wraps itself up by Friday morning here in some part of the North Central Plains in the Great Lakes states. 
After that point on Saturday, the system becomes vertically stacked. And what that means is the upper level low will be sitting on top of the surface low. At that particular point, they sit and spin. And if there's plenty of moisture, that means a prolonged precipitation event for the region around this upper level trough. And that is the significant feature about this trough that I want to make sure that we highlight here. Now, a week ago when we were forecasting this, even just back to last Thursday, I want to show you something. The information that we were looking at last Thursday, well, this is what the upper level flow pattern looked like by the time we got to this Friday night. You see, we were seeing a much different scenario painted in the upper levels of the atmosphere that then evolved in Friday when Andrew Pritchard started to pick up on this being a much more real event. But you can see that over time, this upper level trough, every single one of these maps is valid this Friday night. This upper level trough moved around quite a bit and there is still quite a bit of movement left in it that we're gonna to have to pay attention to. So even though right now the best forecast model we've got, the European model is painting this low pressure center to be sitting right here uh, in the northern parts of Minnesota, uh, we will have to watch for its position to potentially change. And that is what is going to make it very challenging to see how this low pressure system produces the rainfall and snowfall that it is going to produce. So right now, I'll tell you this, the GFS model is much more aggressive than the European. So notice in this map here, the European model is putting this upper level trough still sitting with its trough axis like this. Uh, by the time we get into Friday evening. This is what the GFS has done. The GFS has already wrapped it through, changing the tilt of that trough, and this to me says it's a much more aggressive with the cold air and will be painting a much more expansive frost threat for the United States. And we're gonna talk about that in just a few moments. But that little inflection there is the difference maker. Now, a week ago, we were also talking about how there was the potential for this system to be a non-event because it was going to be starved for moisture. So this particular animation shows you precipitable water and a lot has changed. You see the front that's pushing through today and early tomorrow is on its backside going to be leaving enough of an opening that as this trough sweeps through, it has plenty of ability to pull that moisture back up through Texas. So you see these high precipitable water amounts by Thursday morning retreating, not retreating, returning all the way into the north central part of the United States. Much, much drier air tucked away in the west, but as that warm, moist, unstable air gets pulled into this area, that will be the fuel on which this big low pressure system uses such that by Friday, this is now Friday afternoon, look at this ribbon of moisture out ahead of it getting pulled on the backside. So we will see snow back here. We will see an advancing cold front that could have some strong to severe thunderstorms on it. And that will be the system that we're going to watch take aim in the central United States. Now, as that happens, I now want you toward the end of this to turn your attention actually back out west because as this upper level low just gets stacked and sits here and spins. By the time we get into Monday, Pacific Northwest, we have a pretty substantial event to be talking about here. Monday into Tuesday morning, this is an atmospheric river event taking aim on the Pacific Northwest. And this has been the thing that I have really struggled with so far in the month of October because I had some indicators back in September that I thought we would struggle for moisture in the midsection of the country. But given the changes we saw uh, in the Indian Ocean and in the North Pacific and with these large typhoons recurving into the flow, I am going to be wrong with this, and we are going to be seeing a much more active pattern in the United States than I had anticipated three to uh, four weeks ago. And this ribbon of moisture in through here is a part of that problem that you'll be seeing here as I progress through this forecast. So here it is. Operational GFS run throughout the early morning hours. This is where we're watching our heavier rainfall. Now playing this forward, let's just step this back and watch it one more time. There we go. We see that throughout the day on Monday getting into Tuesday, we are bringing some of the first meaningful rainfall amounts into parts of the Mid-South in the Southeast. Some locations down here have been dry for over two months. Some have not seen rainfall over two months. Now, for much of the midsection of the country, higher atmospheric pressure takes over once we get this uh, first trough out of the way. I'm talking about that, that boundary sitting in through here. But look at the strong winds coming up from the south right here by Tuesday. Our next low is sitting here, and it is going to be bringing Tuesday night into Wednesday morning heavy snowfall into parts of Idaho, but specifically parts of Montana, a region that just got hit hard recently. And as this pushes through, 
This is drawing on an abundant amount of moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico. We can already start to see where our heavy snow bands will be setting up by Wednesday evening. Now at this point, the GFS takes the bottom half of that low and swings it through. This transports the moisture north. This inflection elongates the region of heavy snow into an area like this. And as you can see, by overnight hours on Thursday getting into Friday morning where our heavier rainfall will be, where our extremely windy conditions will be, and where the heaviest snowfall is forecast by the GFS model. By Friday evening, this system has completely wrapped itself out, and at that point, we're going to have to watch to see where the heaviest snow comes in. The GFS model puts it right in here, in through parts of Minnesota. The European model has it much farther to the west. I'll show you that in just a few moments. Well, that system pulls out, gets vertically stacked. It is a cold and very windy weekend for the northern plains and the Great Lakes states. And the next system now starts to push in. Look at it. Watch west. Get out there in the west. See it? Monday into Tuesday, this one takes aim. And we have a problem out here with the anticipation of some very, very heavy rainfall. Meanwhile, maybe some additional rainfall down here in parts of the south central United States. But we are too far out to pin down the details on either of these two systems. But a very, very active pattern in the near term. And so I want to summarize for you what the snowfall amounts look like right now. I don't want to show you amounts with numbers on them because they will change so much that I don't want it to be too confusing. So I'm trying to pin down where I'm anticipating the heaviest amounts. The GFS model first. We do anticipate heavy rain or snowfall, excuse me, coming through the Rocky Mountains and then into south central parts of Montana. As the system evolves Thursday into Friday, uh, the best uh, prognosis by the GFS at this point produces the heaviest snowfall in the far eastern parts of the Dakotas, but mostly central and northern Minnesota, and then wrapping this up here into parts of Man uh, excuse me, yeah, into Manitoba and then into Ontario. This is what the European model is suggesting. It has a bit of a difference in the uh, the flow around the trough, keeping the system farther west. Uh, and as a result, it's mainly focused here on the heaviest snow uh, in through parts of the eastern Dakotas rather than over Minnesota. We'll have to watch it all week long to see how this evolves. But these are the areas that we are targeting. And snowfall amounts at this point could be significant. And I'm talking here well above six inches of snowfall if the current model forecasts have this one pinned down. Now look at the cold air that is coming in behind this. Uh, behind this system here on uh, the Saturday morning, we can see that this the freezing line here. I've kind of put a hard contour, black contour on it. And then by the time we get into Sunday morning, we can see that expanding here a bit farther uh, into the Great Lakes states. But this gets down as far south as the Panhandles through parts of Kansas, northeastern Missouri, getting into a big chunk of Iowa, seeing its first our first frost event with a deep freeze event back in the central and high plains both Saturday and Sunday. So this is a substantial cold air outbreak for this time of year. But remember, this is right about on time for our normal first frost. It's just a deep freeze as expected with this one. The GFS model is by far the most aggressive with this cold air. You can see it coming down here throughout the week. I'm going to pause this early Friday morning right here. Excuse me, this is Friday morning. You can see the full extent of the cold air. Let me now get you into Saturday. So this is Friday night, Saturday morning, 7 a.m. The GFS model, as you can see, much further with the progression of that cold air, bringing it into Missouri and into Illinois and even into western Indiana with the freezing temperatures here. So we, we don't know yet if this is how far it's going to make it, but this is something we're going to have to be watching in the evolution of this forecast model throughout the week. Okay, what could go wrong with this forecast? The position of that low could still adjust hundreds of miles. Throughout this week, we could still see it move west, east, north. So it could really change a lot this week, which is why we don't have this one pinned down just yet, but we get the bigger picture. We need to watch for how quickly this system becomes vertically stacked. That's again where the upper level low sits over the surface low. We also need to watch what's going on with the interaction with this low that's off the east coast that is developing. That could also kind of slow down the progression of this system as it moves across the Great Lakes states. And while Super Typhoon uh, Hagibis, which is an incredibly powerful typhoon, is brewing out here, I don't think it's going to have an impact on this first major winter storm coming through the United States because through the next five days it only makes it here. But you can see it getting pulled into the upper level jet stream pattern. And that's going to be a critical piece to watch moving forward. Okay, So again, here's our trough sweeping through by the time we get out into Thursday, Friday. Now what I'm watching for next week 
At this point on Saturday, remember we're going to be watching for some strong flow starting to inch its way toward the northwest. But do you see this feature here? That's that super typhoon. And what it does, just watch, it gets pulled into the trough right there that then goes here over the Bering Sea. And I don't want to take you out much past Monday or Tuesday of next week because at this point, it will be very difficult to know if we do end up getting this low over high over low pattern stacked up here in the Pacific Ocean. And therefore, predictability beyond the next eight days is very low simply due to that typhoon getting pulled into this trough, knowing its exact position and strength will be very challenging for us. So just looking at what we've got right now, looking out at week two, good model agreement between the GFS and the European model. Again, this is something I have really struggled with understanding with the forecast pattern evolving here throughout the month of October. I would have anticipated this not being as wet as it has been, but we can see here that persistence may have won out in this forecast because we do see here still a slight wet bias getting into week two. But as you notice, we are taking aim here on the western United States, specifically the Pacific Northwest and British Columbia with our systems next week. Tropics are quiet. Now, I see I accidentally made a bit of a mistake on this slide. You have two of the same maps here. I just wanted to show one, but I want you to see here that even as we progress toward the middle of this month, the ideas of shaking this cooler pattern across the Northwest relatively low and also across the Canadian prairies in the North Central United States. All right, so that's your 11 to 15 day forecast time period. Getting out a little bit longer term, what I'll be studying this week, what we'll be presenting in the long range update coming out on Wednesday. We're going to certainly see the new long range European model forecast for the next several months. But remember, this Indian Ocean dipole event, this strong easterly wind that's in this area, uh, and also the westerly wind on the other side of it is kind of faking us out a bit, thinking we're recovering an El Nino event in here. You can see our ocean temperatures increasing. And if this water continues to warm, what I'm concerned about is a strong subtropical jet that could develop throughout the late fall and early winter. And that would mean a very active start to our winter in the eastern two-thirds of the United States. We'll be talking about it and keeping a close eye on it. This will also be impacting South America. And at least over the next two weeks, here's what we're watching in South America. The GFS Ensemble is probably too wet in the areas that I've highlighted here with black dashed lines. Uh, just certainly picking up on the drier bias in parts of Goyas, Tocantins, uh, eastern Mato Grosso, and getting over into eastern Brazil's growing areas in, in total. Planting progress is substantially delayed compared to a year ago where uh, three weeks ago we'd already started planting uh, in South America. And I want you to watch out for some really cold air that we're moving in the five to 10 day time period into Argentina, getting down into parts of Southern Brazil. So there's a deep trough in the flow anticipated in this area. So still some delays in South America as they're trying to get that first crop beans in. The rainfall has been too widely scattered and not, too, and not uniform enough for everybody to hit the green light and get going, all right? So with that, I'll go ahead and wrap up this forecast video now that we got perspective of both North North and South America and the active patterns that are coming in the, in the next few days. Have a great week. Keep a close eye on all of our content coming out this week at my.nutrinagsolutions.com. I'll talk to you each day of the week. Have a good one. Thank you.